This is our in-depth video on the mercury distillation. Okay guys, so here's what we got. So this is our mercury that we had already distilled one time. Uh, we got it back inside the still, but we changed the setup a little bit on this. This time, I added this uh, condenser in right here. I'm going to use it as my uh, refractor. And uh, having this refractor on here, for those of you that don't know, what happens is, is mercury uh, goes into its gaseous phase. Uh, as it's uh, uh, coming up, anything that has a boiling point that's higher than the mercury, if it's given enough of a chance, it will cool down uh, first, recondense, and this refractor tower gives that chance to drop back in. So the idea with the refractor tower is, as you're doing your distillation, because the stuff that's not mercury will drop out first and, and go back into the container, you end up with a much pure fraction before it hits your condenser. So we'll end up with very, very pure mercury over inside our collection chamber. Now, I could not fit it all in. In fact, even though I did overfill that distillation vessel a little bit, there's still a good chunk of the uh, first distilled mercury. So this will be a double distillation, this time with a refractor. It's going to be a late night tonight. I think it's already uh, past that. It's all right, 740. Got to stick it out until it's done because we need this mercury so we can start uh, moving on to the uh, next, next part of the experiment. All right, we'll get back at you in a little bit. So, Sands uh, getting up temperature. It's right around uh, 186. That's where it starts to boil under vacuum. And we can see it's just starting to come up the column here. It's got a long, long way to go. It is pretty tight inside that space. So, because the thermometer goes down through the center, that tube's not all that big. So, I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not. Well, that thermometer is not working out as planned. And basically, it's the area is so thin in between it, it's getting uh, mercury trapped in like this. And every now and then, it's like bubbling through. So I think I'm going to actually have to pull, the, take the thermometer, and pull it. You really don't need the thermometer. And you can see well, the mercury is moving. It's, it occasionally does. Some, yeah, there it goes. Just really wild looking. Uh, that part of it's actually kind of cool. I decided to make one more change on this thing. So originally I had, for the condenser here, I had the water come in, uh, kind of flow through the condenser, and then go out to the drain. Instead I decided I'm going to go ahead, I'm actually going to hook this condenser up. Because what I noticed is, is that the mercury was just kind of coming up, and it wasn't really, it wasn't dropping back out as fast as I would have liked. So I decided to go ahead and we'll take like the slightly warmish water coming off the condenser, flow that through here. It's going to drop out uh, more of the impurities a lot faster. In fact, you can even see it doing it right here at the beginning of the tube. I'll give it a few minutes. Uh, I'll be here for a while, but you guys will be able to see it in just a few seconds if this is actually was a good idea or not. Looks like that's not going to work. It's recondensing the mercury just fine, but it's doing it so well that the mercury is condensing right here. And then it's almost immediately dropping right back down into uh, the uh, distillation chamber, uh, actually preventing it from being able to heat up enough to uh, fill the column. You know, it was worth a shot. Didn't work out. Let it run. It's been running for a while now, and I got the Variac turned up all the way. That's as high as that thing's going to go. So that heating mantle is as hot as it's going to get. Yeah, we just won't be able to run water through it. So what we'll do instead is we'll pull this tube back off. We'll hook it back up the way how it was. We'll drain the water out of the column. And then uh, we'll just do it real slow. We'll just, maybe what I could do is I could rig up a fan or something on this thing just to help keep the glass a little bit cooler because uh, we do have some fans laying around. So I think I might try and do that. But right now I'm going to get this hose off and just turn the temperature down and just let the thing, without any coolant going through it so it's not dripping so much mercury back inside the chamber, and just let the thing run. And we'll see how that works. Well, I did some digging around and I managed to locate a uh, old 12 volt computer fan, one of the labs. I also found a, a power supply. The only issue I have is uh, the wires here are a little bit too short, so I'm going to go ahead and lengthen those up a bit. Solder these dudes up real quick. Soldering necessary? No make for better connection yeah it looks nice take pride in your work a little flux on there this is just regular plumbers flux 
I use it for all about everything. Solder is just a basic, uh, well, it's not even electrical solder. Apparently it's for metal work. That's alright, it'll work. We'll get the stick. Bam, look at that. Sticks like glue. So I just take these, I just twist them up, twist them together. One wire here is a little bit long than the one that was on the fan, but that's all right. Get to work, so I see. Twist it together like that. And then a little bit of flux on there. Good old plumber's flux. There, that's it. I'm going to get a little fancy with this. I'm going to throw some shrink tube on it. It's right on there. Red for red, and we'll do some black for black. It's like shrinky dinks, only a lot more fun. There we are. I think that's pretty good. So go ahead and we'll get this thing set up. So here's the final setup on this thing. So there's the power supply. That's set to 12 volts, only drawing a a little less than two tenths of an amp. Run it our fan here. I gotta get the uh, temperature back up. Is uh, I had to go to the lab to locate that power supply and find that fan. Looking for this stuff, it, it had to run without heat. You can't have mercury distillation running on its own, so I had to shut it down. So it's just gonna take a few minutes to get back up the temperature. So find out here pretty quick whether or not uh, this is gonna work or not. I think that this will. I think we got it because. It was too much with the water, and it wasn't quite enough without anything on it. And this thing's already, and it's warm, but it's nothing like it was. This I can actually put my hands on now, so I, I think this will work out well. This is working really well with the fan here. Condensation that's building all through the uh, distillation tower. Uh, that's what we want. And we're getting to drop out. It's going to be a slow process, and that's part of having one of these towers on here. It does slow things down, but you get a much pure fraction coming out. So the mercury will be much cleaner coming through the other end. And uh, it's building up, you know, slowly but surely. See our mercury, it's freezing because it's in our cold bath, which is dry ice mixed with ethanol. It's at negative 78 degrees C. And the reason for doing that is, of course, to trap any mercury vapors that might happen to make it through all this down into here. There's still mercury vapor, it should get trapped in here. And then as a redundancy, we have an additional cold trap, which is actually was a bubbler, but it works just as well as a cold trap down to the pumps and their filters and all that. So same setup that we did before. The big difference is, of course, is we have our tower on here. This is our second distillation. Is we need really pure mercury the next part of this project. So it's gonna be a late night tonight, but that's okay. I have no kids today, so uh, I plan on this being a late night. So I'm going to stick it out with this until it's done. So it's uh, the next morning now. Uh, things are going really well. Uh, got a lot of mercury that's built up inside our uh, collection vessel. Got through pretty much most of it here. There's still a good couple hours to go yet, but uh, it's coming along pretty smooth. I'm about running out of time. I got to get my son off to school, but I'll end up uh, shutting this thing down uh, just so I can go take care of family stuff, then I'll come on back, turn it back on, and get the thing wrapped up, but uh, we knew it was going to take a while. Uh, you know, when you add on a column, when you, when you add on a distillation tower, it just, things go slower, but you end up with a much pure fraction on the other side, and uh, I, I think it's worth the time. I think that this is going to work really good for us uh, for the uh, uh, next phase of the project. So this is something that just happened near the end of uh, the distillation. The mercury just starts spinning like crazy. If you have any idea why, post a comment because I can't figure it out. So the fan, the air is actually blowing backwards. So let's put that on properly. <laughs> there we go.